In the next few lectures, you're going to learn several new matrix operations. One of these operations is the product of two matrices A and B. This operation is used a lot in applications of linear algebra, which involve two or more matrices at the same time. You've already learned how to multiply a matrix A by a vector X, where the number of entries of X has to be the same as the number of columns of A. Can you guess how you can generalize that product to a product of a matrix A and another matrix B? The key to understanding the true nature of matrix multiplication is given by the connection between matrices and linear transformations. Recall that the transformation S from Rn to Rm is called linear if it has the following two properties. S of u plus v is equal to S of u plus S of v for all vectors u and v in Rn. And secondly, S of c times u is equal to c times S of u for all u in Rn and c in R. Also recall that for each linear transformation S from Rn to Rm, there exists a unique m by n matrix A such that S of u is A times u for each vector u in Rn. This matrix A is called the standard matrix of the linear transformation S. Now suppose you have a linear transformation T from Rp to Rn and a second linear transformation S from Rn to Rm. Since the domain of S is equal to the codomain of T, both equal to Rn, the composition of T and S is well defined in the following way. A vector x in Rp is mapped by T to a vector T of x in Rn, which in its turn is mapped to a vector S of T of x in Rn by the second linear transformation S. The transformation that maps x in Rp to S of T of x in Rn is called the composition of T and S in that order, and is denoted by S small circle T. It turns out that the composition of the two linear mappings, T and S, is linear as well. Here's the proof of that theorem. For all u and v in R p and c in R, we have S of t of u plus v is equal to S of t u plus t v because t is linear, and this is equal to S of t of u plus S of t of v because S is linear. S of t of c times u is equal to S of c times t u because t is linear, and this is equal to c times S of t of u because S is linear. Let's summarize the result. We have a linear transformation t from Rp to Rn. Since the transformation is linear, a unique n by p matrix B exists such that t of x is b times x for all vectors x in Rp. Secondly, we have a linear transformation S from Rn to Rm. Again, the transformation is linear, so a unique n by n matrix A exists, such that S of y is a times y for all vectors y in Rn. Thirdly, since the domain of S is equal to the codomain of T, we have the composite mapping S after T from Rp to Rm. This mapping is linear as well, so there must exist a unique m by p matrix C, such that S of t of x is C times x for all vectors x in Rp. So, we have a matrix B which maps vectors from Rp to Rn, and we have a matrix A which maps vectors from Rn to Rm. And the composition of these two mappings is represented by a third matrix C. This matrix C is by definition equal to the product AB of the matrices A and B. In other words, product AB of the matrices A and B is the standard matrix of the composite transformation S after T, where A is the standard matrix of S and B is the standard matrix of T. While watching this video, you may already have been wondering what will happen if you change the order of A and B. When you multiply two numbers A and B, the order is irrelevant. That is, A times B is always equal to B times A. In matrix algebra, this is not true. So in general, AB and BA will not be the same, even if they are both well defined. In class, you're going to learn how the product matrix AB is actually computed. See you then. Make sure you don't miss this important lesson.